Thanks for staying with us. Property values in Port St. Lucie are beginning to increase and get a little better as the national economy gets a little better. And that means there's a lot of work going on at the St. Lucie County Property Appraiser's Office to keep track of those records and make sure it's all accounted for properly. And joining us today to talk about that is Property Appraiser Ken Pruitt. Good to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Ed. Good to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me on the show. Pleasure to have you. Thank you. Uh, former State Senator Ken yeah, Pruitt, well, President you. of the Florida Senate. Yeah. If anybody doesn't know you by now, uh, you've got a long history of service uh, to this community, to this state, uh, and a lot of good things have happened as a result of it. So we thought it would be a good idea to bring you in and talk about some of the latest things happening with your office at the property appraiser. Well, thank you, Ed, for that. And it's uh, it's great to be on the show, and it's also great to be home from Tallahassee. I'm, I'm now uh, currently serving in my fourth year. Uh, it's hard to believe that uh, that I'm already uh, being the property appraiser for that long, and it's been uh, just a, a wonderful experience. I, I didn't uh, know if, uh, you know, making the transition from the state level to the local level, and it's been uh, really the greatest job I've ever had. So well, I'm, I'm just absolutely thrilled to uh, be able to serve. So I want to thank the people, first of all, for giving me the privilege of serving. Uh, and number two, also to thank them for giving us the resources that we need to really run a top-notch office that we have at the property appraiser's office. Um, and, and with that, Ed, uh, it's about the people in that office. So we have uh, currently 64 professionals who just do an outstanding job. It's uh, customer service is foremost, number one, uh, to make sure that when that customer comes in walking in the door uh, that, uh, that they, they feel that they've been served. And, and it, it, they personify public service and, and they're just great. Uh, they have a great heart and they have a great dedication uh, to uh, service. Uh, when you when you look at the people, uh, when you look at the professionals who serve in that office, um, I, I look at for two years in a row, uh, we've been voted best places to work in St. Lucie County, uh, one of several organizations that has done that. Uh, United Way campaign, uh, what I'm really proud of in that office is that you have 64 professionals, we have 100% participa participation giving to United Way. Uh, last year our office gave $15,000, this year they've pledged over $18,000. So to have 100% participation three years in a row uh, really says a lot about that office and the people who make it up. Plus on top of that uh, we do uh, little bake sales, hot dog sales, and we raised over $5,000 this past year to give to different organizations like Big Brothers, Big Sisters, uh, to Harvest uh, and to uh, Boys and Girls Club and, and other organizations throughout the county. So uh, just great people to work with. Well, when I've dealt with the office there, the, uh, the, they were all very professional. The customer service was obviously foremost on their minds. I guess they, you've got a sense over there that they're part of this community and that's how they've got to respond. They're not the person behind the counter who has all these stacks of paperwork, this is somebody's part of the community that you've got to work with. Yeah, you know, a lot of times customers come in and they, they kind of have the white knuckle syndrome and, and because they're dealing with government and they think that they, that, you know, that the onus that the, or that what they have to prove and it's just the opposite. Whenever you walk into one of our offices, uh, we've completely changed the culture to be like, okay, how can we assist you? And in fact, our motto is, our promise to you, superior service trusted results and, and that's what we practice day in and day out and and and, and they do it uh, you know from the heart and and they believe in this in this culture uh, coming from a business background and being able to you know to bring that dichotomy back into the back into the property appraiser office well I guess you know that you know all uh, the local is what really matters everybody at the local level <clears throat> you've been at the state level but it still comes back to local does not it, it still oh, yeah. comes back to the people back at home well tip O'Neill said it best all politics are local so uh, you better make sure that the customers at the local level are being served and, 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 and giving professional service and 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 that's what our and that's what our professionals do day, day in and day out so we've been through this uh, kind of wild economy where things went down low and uh, the property value went really low uh, and they may be beginning to pick back up again. How does the staff handle it? Does, it, does that mean there's more work for them to well, have to deal with? You know, our, our busiest time is, is really between January and March because that's when exemption time is upon us. And, and so the office is really working at a breakneck pace. And of course, then the second busiest time, or as busy, I should say, is really after the trim notices come out in August. Uh, and throughout the year, you know, there's a lot of inspections that are go going on. And, and that's where we really key in is that if you have a benefit, in fact, it, whenever I first got there, letters that would go out to our customers would say, um, per statutory reference, 
618.23, and it was very impersonal. And so what we did is we start out our sentence, our first sentence in the letters is to ensure that you get the benefit that you're entitled to. So what we're trying to do is that, you know, there may be an exemption, and there's a litany of exemptions that the legislature has passed of recent. And so what we do is when that trim notice comes out in August, and that's when it's very important, you know, some folks, they'll take their, their exemption or their property tax notice and they'll just put it on the side. It's very important that they read that and they know exactly what's in there because there may be an exemption that they previously may not have been entitled to that they're, that they're entitled to now. So ours is a lot of outreach. We're trying to let customers know that, you know, that if you're a senior, if you're in limited income, uh, if you're a veteran, that there are new exemptions available to you to be able to take advantage of. And that's where the outreach really comes in. And of course, that's what our professionals do best. And people may be able to save some money if they are entitled to one of these exemptions. That's yeah, what it comes you know, down to. You know, every, you know, every little bit helps, uh, particularly for our seniors and for our young families. And so anything that they can, you know, take advantage of, it really is important for them to ask questions. And that's what we encourage customers to do whenever they come in. And you know, not in, not to feel intimidated or feel like, well, if I ask that, it's going to feel like it's not a you know, like a foolish ask question or something. I just like, look, get. we work for you, and and whatever it is that we can do, you know, to make sure that you have the benefit that you're entitled to. You know, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna number one give you the benefit of the doubt, and we're gonna do whatever it takes to make sure that we get you to where you need to be. You know, obviously within the law. So I mentioned that uh, property values are turning yeah. around again. Uh, what's that looking like for us now? I tell you, I, I, um, I am really optimistic in the city of Port St. Lucie. Uh, of course, you just need to drive around in tradition, and you're also seeing it in the, you know, whenever you drive and you're seeing building permits and homes being built now. And, and it's, it's really very optimistic for the future. Um, I'm not going to prognosticate that it's going to be like in 2005 and 2006 when property values went crazy and you know the home building was at a breakneck pace and, and I don't know if we if we ever want to get to that point again because it was just it was hard to keep up. Historically, with. that was an oddity. Yeah. That really, that doesn't really happen. We had in this town 40 percent, 42, and 44, three-year run like that. Wow. And that's an incredible yeah. increase back in 05, 04, 05, 06. Yeah. But really, that's a statistical oddity to have some housing, any investment right. rise up like that. Well, when you look at in 2008, and, and, and as you'll see on the chart here, that in 2008, uh, you know, the price per square foot of the average home being sold was $105 per square foot. Then, it, then we had the bust, and, and of course, then it went down, and it went down to about $61. And now we're back up to uh, $81 a square foot. So, you know, it's it is you know it's turned the tide, and as you can see by that red line, you know that you know that we're, we're starting to see light at the end of the tunnel and it's not a train coming at us. And, and so now it's truly what we're going to be able to see for planning purposes uh, for, for the uh, city council members and for the mayor and for the city manager is they'll be able to plan to be able to look to see now we have a steady increase. Um, and it, it would be that this is just not, this is not an anomaly. This is, this is steady as she goes. So we're seeing you know, a steady incline um, in terms of the property values. And, that bodes well for the city. And and steady is good. We don't need the, the soaring, yeah. skyrocketing stuff that we had before. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned how this affects city government. That is true. City governments, we plan our budgets based on these trend lines and what we can anticipate yeah. uh, property values being in the future. And of course, nobody knows exactly what they'll be, but it's important to get as a uh, a reasonable guesstimate right. uh, to begin projecting future year budgets because and, that's what it's based on. And Ed, that really is a great point because we go by trends and, and you know while while we read different national periodicals to you know to you know to see how it's re being reflected throughout the rest of the country, you know the city of Port St. Lucie is, is probably the most resilient city when you look at what it's been through. Um, it, it is it's it's going to come back and and of course. You know how strong it's going to come back is, you know, depending upon you know what our city fathers and what the and and what the market dictates. But all all indicators are is that it's going to be strong. And so, when you look at last year, of course, we had the nuclear power, power plant. A lot of a lot of the increase was reflected because of all the improvements that were made to that. But what we're seeing now, uh, particularly in the city of Port St. Lucie, is 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 it's really in resales and also with. With a, with a new building construction. So 
our, our city planners, our city fathers, uh, our, our elected officials are, will now be able to, you know, to be able to plan for the future in a way that's uh, very thoughtful, which they've done, um, always done, but at the same time now they'll actually know what's going to be happening. June 1st is the, is the date that, that we'll actually give out the numbers, um, but I would say all indicators now are particularly positive. We should see something positive. Yeah. And we also look at uh, building permits oh, yeah. here, um, and those buildings maybe not are they're maybe not built yet, and they haven't made it to your roles yet, yeah. uh, but they will in another year. Uh, and the building permits are way up also. Yeah. So we know there's a lot of confidence out there. And, and, and you raise an even better point is that remember we're always a year behind. So whenever you get your trim notice in 14, what's happening is that's going to be reflective of everything that happened in 13. So what is going to happen? We're always playing catch up only because that st statutorily that's the way that the framework of the property appraising goes. So all the numbers that we're going to reflect are going to be the numbers of 13, but even as you see on the chart here, 13 was was a good year and, and 14 will even be a better year ahead. It's very clear from this red line. It starts high way oh, back yeah. there in the in the boom years, yeah. dips down low and it starts coming back up again. Yep, and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very positive for the future uh, for our, for our, our elected officials to be able to see uh, those trends and and, and in terms of how positive they are. So good news uh, oh, yeah. it is there. And the one good thing for the taxpayer is even though the property rates go up, even if they go up more than 3 percent, people they don't they don't, they don't uh, thanks to save our homes, uh, even though your property values may increase if they go up 5 percent or 10 percent, uh, they're going to be limited to a maximum of 3% because of the Save Our Homes initiative that was passed. And remember, it's based on the CPI. So if the CPI is 2% or 1.5%, that will be the increase that they'll have. So they'll never have to worry about, uh, you know, if the property values increase 15%, which we don't see that happening. But just hypothetically, if it's 10 or 15%, they'll always just pay a maximum of of up to the 3%. Uh, the, uh, and it will take a long time for... Uh, people to be paying back what they were paying before because it went down by more than 3% exactly. a year. Right. It doesn't go up by more than that. Exactly. But for the city, uh, there's still a whole lot of empty ground out in tradition and out in the southwest part of the city, right. unbuilt yet, uh, and many empty lots throughout the city, so there's still a lot of opportunity for new growth. Well, and that's what you're better. seeing. You know, what you're seeing is a lot of growth in tradition, a lot of building permits being pulled out there, but you're also seeing you know, the fill-in lots all throughout the city of Port St. Lucie, you're also starting to see a lot of homes that are being built there. And remember, it takes developers a while to ramp up. You know, they've got to buy the lots, they have to get prepped and prepared for it. And that's what we're seeing a lot. There's a lot of lot sales that are going on. Now we're, now we're seeing letters that are being sent to lot owners to say, sell me your lot by, by, these, by these developers who want to come in. So, you know, that's, again, although we're always a year behind, uh, we're always looking ahead as well to see, okay, well, what's going to be happening here, you know, just to be prepared for it. So uh, your office keeps busy through all this. You've mentioned uh, that right now it's it's uh, Homestead. Well, Homestead exemption time. It was uh, March first. If, if if somebody after March first, we don't uh, you know we don't say that no they can't get it again. But what we do is uh, what we do is is that they come in and if they have a reason as to why they were late and if we can get them through the petition process, then you know we'll go ahead and want or that. Um, and then we'll have the trim notices come out in August, and it's always very important for the customers uh, for for them to read that actual trim notice because it shows the benefits that they have and there may be one that's missing you know they they may have turned the golden age and you know they need to come there in and is. see if they're eligible for something else mm -hmm. in terms of that exemption um, and, and so what, what we also do throughout the year is we have what's called the Property Appraiser Institute and it's open to all citizens where they can come in and it's about a half day to where they come in and they can get a full overview of exactly what happens in our office. It's not like we have a dart board in the back of the room and we're throwing darts to get prop property values. There's, there's an actual real science behind all of this and so um, you know our customers can come in, we give them a full tour, we give them a red carpet tour of the place to see, you know, after all, they're the ones who are paying for it. And we're grateful for that. And it's their office. And so we want them, the more knowledge and information that they have about their office that they own, um, and that we just happen to occupy and run for them, uh, the better it is for that customer. Um, so we're doing the Property Appraiser Institute as well. We also have what's called a VIP process, Value Inquiry Process. Instead of waiting till your trim notice comes in August and you're saying, 
that property appraiser, they're crazy. I know my property's not worth that much, or I know my property's worth more than that. Instead of waiting for that formal value, uh, you know, value petition process, uh, VAB process, process to take place, we have what's called a VIP because all of our customers are v VIPs. We come in very informally. We sit down with you. We show you the information that we have, how we how we got to the number that we were at. But we also ask you if there's something you have, perhaps you have an appraisal, or perhaps something happened, you know, with the house that that shows that it's worth more or worth less. Then we take all that information in um, because while while we pride ourselves on being you know, having trusted results, we know sometimes that, you know, we may miss something. And so we always encourage the customer anytime, anytime throughout the year, don't wait for that trim notice to come in. If you, you know, of course, on our w website, you know, your, you know, your, your, you know, your value is posted there. And you may think, boy, you know, I, you know, I need to go down and see those folks. And come on in and what we'll do is we'll give you uh, to one of our professionals. My door is always open. Come on in and, and, and uh, you know, we'll sit down with you. And, Try to come up with, you know, if you if you feel that you're right, maybe you are. You, uh, you then, want to hear? You know, it. obviously we're going to listen to you. Well, you, and you don't get in everybody's house, and when you're when you're setting value, so you don't know what might be in there, what renovations they may have made. Hopefully they've permitted it. That well, that, help you. that the, that's the key a lot of times, and it's a great point. Uh, is that you know sometimes you know maybe there was you know in a fast-paced world sometimes you don't think you need to pull a permit to do this or do that. And, and so, you know, you miss that. And, and so it's, it's just really important. The more information that we have, you know, the better it's going to be for you. And sometimes whenever our customers get a letter from us, automatically they think, oh, geez, you know, they're trying to get something from me. The more information our office has, the more empirical data that we have, the better job that we can do in fairly assessing properties. Because we want you, all we're trying to do is to make sure everybody pays their fair share. We're market value. Uh, you know, we're not a tax a revenue agency. Our job is one thing and one thing only, and that's to put value um, on uh, properties out there. And to provide great customer service in the, in the process. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about, uh, for the uh, person who's interested a little bit, that uh, the website. You've got a yeah. uh, yeah. convenient website. You're, you're yeah. trying to stay ahead on the technology uh, yeah. that's necessary nowadays for any of this. And, and Ed, let me let me particularly thank the taxpayers for giving us the resources that we need uh, to be able to stay up with technology. You know, there was a point, a, a day when, whenever, and I'm old enough to remember when you when you got on the website, and the website would come on and go, err, err, you know, and you were waiting for that picture to come up. And at click, that time, go get a thought, cup of coffee. Click, come back. You thought it was like magic. You thought it was the greatest thing in the world. Today, when you go click it, if it doesn't come up immediately, you're like, "What's going on?" You know, how come this, you know, how come this website isn't as fast as it is? We're constantly. We don't ever pretend that we will ever get ahead of the curve with technology because it's changing at a breakneck pace. Um, but what we do want to do is we want to stay at the curve, and so we've invested enormous amounts. Uh, taxpayer dollars and we're very thankful and sometimes our budget will reflect that although over the past three years we've given back 1.5 million dollars over 1.5 million dollars back to the taxpayers back to the county uh, and other uh, tax paying entities or tax revenue generating entities to be able you know because of our you know we we've, we've consolidated offices we've 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 done exactly what the private sector has done we've gotten smaller at the same time we've also uh, been more thoughtful in terms of uh, advancing technologies. So if you if you see just a, a you know a nudge up, realize that that is being invested into this technology. Uh, for instance, um, we all know about Google with the big camera it has on top of the cars, and you can go on Google Earth and you can get your front page. We're doing that right now in in in, in the southern part of the of the county right now. A company called I Look About, and they're taking what is what are literally 3D images between the images that we get, um, you know, from you know from the air and then from the from the street view, and what that allows us to do, and, and literally our our professionals will have this 3D imagery in front of them at their desktop to be able, instead of always having to get in a car and go out there and inspect, literally they will be able to do it from 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 the desk. Um, it doesn't mean that this technology will replace that professional. 
what it means for us that in the future we won't have to hire as many new professionals because we're able to do so much more from the desktop because of all the imagery that we have here. So, so if you see that little car with the big old camera sitting it's up, don't Google. be alarmed for it. it it's you know, it's it, it is ours, uh, the taxpayers uh, that they've paid for, and, and we're also doing that. And, it, it, and as you can see on our website that we try to design it about as close to Amazon.com or one of those really easy search engines where customers can go on here. Um, we average well over 100, 150,000 clicks a day on this website. Wow. During the trim notice time during August, that sometimes can approach you know, 250,000 to 300,000 clicks a day. Uh, that means if the average person is clicking three or four times, you know, that's also included in it as well. What I'm trying to get at is that this website is used a lot. This is not your typical business promotion website. There is a, just so much data that we have within this website. And so it takes you know, an, an, an awful lot of infrastructure, technology-wise, for, for us to be able to keep pace. And so that's what we're doing here. And, and, and we are very proud of, of the systems that are in place and the systems that we're going to be putting in place. And it's a constant. I mean, we're constantly improving our technology. We will continue to do so. We're grateful to the taxpayers, although sometimes it may mean an increase in our budget. It's because we're putting it in that, in that technological infrastructure to be able to build it so we can do a better job for them. It really does work very well, particularly on searches. We get a lot of questions to the city through our website yeah. about property, and we always send out links to your website. Yeah. Go search here. You can search by name, by property. Yeah. Uh, you can set it up all kinds of different ways. And it's quite responsive and robust. Well, it does respond quickly. Well, you know, Ed, it, it was funny. My, my wife, uh, we were going in to check on the, the, a water bill. Um, and our website was in the utilities department, it was on our website. And so they go to our website, many of the entities go to our website to get that empirical data that they use, you know, each and, you know, each and, each and, each and every day. So, uh, you, know, we, you know, we know it's being used a lot, but it was kind of surprising to see that, okay, well, great, you know, they're, you know, they're taking advantage of that. And quite frankly, uh, for public safety, uh, when these images are, are finalized, um, the Sheriff's Department, the City of Port St. Lucie Police Department, the City of Fort Pierce, any law enforcement agency, firing, they're going to be able to go on our website and literally with this kind of 3D imagery, um, and let's say if the SWAT team or whatever, they're going to know exactly you know, it, let's say that there's a building there, um, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to keep this updated once every two or three years, uh, and, and that's why it costs more to do it, but you can imagine if public safety has that up-to-date information, and I know you've probably seen in the movies where they, you know, they lay out the plans there to, okay, right. well, what's over here? Well, we actually will have that in picture form for them to be able to, you know, to be able to get up and, and to be able to do a better job there in terms of our safety. Sure, and it's just so important, this technology, to stay ahead. As you mentioned, who, who will ever get ahead of the curve? I don't know, uh -huh. but if you get behind the curve, you're in a bad place. Well, it and it's just the reality of, of life today. Yeah, particularly in our office. It, it's that, again, it's not a business promotion site, although we do have, in the lower, as you'll see in the lower left-hand column, we have what's called St. Lucie on the Move. And what that does is that, that talks about all the great attributes of St. Lucie County. Um, and that's what we're proud of is that uh, we're a partner in this community. Well, we love this community. We know that whenever that, particularly after this winter, when our friends from up north you know, are clicking onto our website, what they're also seeing is they're seeing PGA, they're seeing about the city of Port St. Lucie, they're seeing about the Met Stadium. So it's kind of like a Chamber of Commerce promotional tool that we use because we're taking advantage of them going to our website uh, for real estate purposes um, and then at the same time saying, oh wow, they've got this, this, you know, all this great stuff about you know, about what's happening in that county as well. Yeah, and there's a lot, and it's, oh, it yeah. is important, you're right, a lot of people from out of town are looking, and there's, it's important to show them what's here. Yeah. If somebody still wants to talk to a human the old-fashioned oh, way, yeah. Uh, yeah. they can still call? Uh, absolutely, 462-1021, uh, you know, is our numbers, and, and for it, it really, to make it even easier, 462-1000. 
Um, and where we try to do, we have two offices. We have one on Walton Road at the Annex there, and we also have our office on Virginia Avenue in Fort Pierce as well. And our professionals are willing and ready to serve you at any time. And you know, we still have at 462 10, uh, 10, 20, 20, 1021. You know, you'll still get a, a, a real person, get the real person, you know, to answer the phone and get you to where you need to be. And that's still so important as well. Absolutely. Property appraiser Ken Pruitt, Thanks, thank Ed. you for coming in and joining us I and spending some time uh, to talk to us about all the work that your office does and the great staff you have going there. Uh, it's a real value to our community. Well, thank and you for the opportunity. We appreciate, appreciate the effort. It. Thank you. Good to have you. All right. Thank Thanks. you. And we'll be back after this quick message. Stay with us.